thank you all for letting me speak here tonight. Um, this is actually been a, an interesting project that I've been working on. Um, I'm not affiliated with uh, academics uh, as far as university base. I am a for-profit as far as um, uh, NASA and the NIH and all that go, but um, my inspiration <coughs> is, is my son. Um, this was the last good picture taken of him, and two weeks later, this is what I had. Um, we didn't know for three years. He had a massive infection, uh, Haemophilus influenza and staph. Um, and basically, he, he was nonverbal. He was not everything. So he regressed to about a three-month level. And what I really didn't understand is why, why his body wasn't working in a way that was affecting his movement so much. I mean, how do you go from walking, talking, um, and all of that using utensils to, to, to nothing? Um, it just, the regression was so severe. Um, and I really wasn't getting um, far with mainstream, all of that. I mean, 26 doctors, we've been all through all of this, UCSD, um, National Jewish, uh, but they, some recognized that he was very sick, they just didn't know what it was. Um, so one of the, my, my countless hours after becoming a therapist then, specifically to help him, not to actually have my own business, and, and now I go around the world and, uh, uh, I actually presented uh, four papers at uh, Oxford last year at the International Movement Conference, or this year actually, this summer, and I actually just produced uh, two posters for neuroscience. So I'm really trying to tie in all of these findings, but the reason I know uh, I've discovered something on movement is because of the space program. Um, because everything I'm about to show you about how we operate on the ground is not how we operate in an outer space. So I was reading a book on the Einstein to the boys, and I'm a very visual person. We were discussing the shuttle. Um, didn't think anything of it, uh, more so on escape velocity. And uh, about three hours later, it hit me, and I said, oh my gosh, rotation. We, we can't get out of here without rotation. And I realized every person with special needs, old and young, has issues with rotations. But baby is born without the ability to have rotation in its system guaranteed special needs. Um, so, one of the things we were taught with, with so far with gravity is Newton's law. And now I get it. If I drop an apple or if I fall down, it's going to be at the same speed. And what's interesting about Newton's law, it, it really is set up much more for inanimate objects. Meaning the examples I usually give you, if I was pushing against, like say my mom or something, she and I both have to be on ice skates. Well, when does that happen? I mean, we, we and not only do we have a friction environment, and with gravity, but we also again have, I can manipulate my movements, I have rotation, I can do everything that I can do, um, has certain movement factors. That apple will never get off the ground, but hopefully I will, um, and for a long time. Uh, so, and also what's very interesting about Newton's law, when I realized uh, a lot of again how we format, it's not that gravity doesn't exist, is that when I'm walking, let's say to and from like this, I'm actually walking through gravity. I'm not saying don't fall. Now, when your nervous system is saying don't fall, you know, that's when you start, you're in trouble because your nervous system is start, starting to succumb to gravity or neural map to gravity. We do all of our neural mapping to the opposition of gravity, meaning whether we reach for a cup, close our car door, everything that we do, and that's what I'm gonna to show to you tonight, is based off of we have all our cognitive facilities on opposition to gravity. So with this, now we have mathematics. So it's not just you know force, mass, acceleration uh, basis. No two human beings are the same. You know, my, if you x-ray me, I might look like the same as someone that's in Cirque du Soleil. Well, that's not happening. I'm not like balancing from silks. I mean, we, we have different capabilities based off of our life movements. Yes, we can say experiences, but everything that we do coming here today is based off of how we move. If I say, how is your driving? It's really, how are you moving in the car? Um, your spatial orientation, all of your senses and your sub-senses, um, balance, uh, counterbalance. So again, when, when you've got someone like this is a high-end performer and what astronauts need to be, they really are trying to uh, work in opposition to gravity. So the reason what the humans and, and, and physics were so interesting with all of this 
Um, and please excuse me, I'm not a mathematician or a physicist. I really am a movement specialist. Um, I'm still working on a lot of the math that's going forward with all this, and I would love some help. So if anybody here is a mathematician, uh, I would love it. But when you see a rocket take off, if the rocket itself isn't rotating, that's when the atmospheric pressure will, to, will kick in. That's where Newton's law kicks in and poof. And that rocket's gone. That rocket has to, there are different torques involved and rotations depending on how also where we're throwing up our curvature rotation. But to get off this rock, we really need to be a little bit creative. It's not about just having a blast cap underneath and going straight up. So it rotates out and does whatever um, that it needs to do. And But when we start going into outer space, um, we really have to look at the way, again, we format all of our movements. We've been doing the space program now for way too many years and we still have the same complications. And we can't get someone in outer space longer than six months. Um, basically what I'm telling you here tonight, I believe I can keep them up there for about three years. Um, when we start going into outer space, um, one of the things, the complications that's, that's looked into, first of all, it's a, it's a lot, it takes a lot of money to get a guy up there. Um, but for whatever reason, um, they really look at the shape of the astronaut and how they get there. So in other words, it's not always the best man wins. It's, it's you know, if you're brilliant at what you do and you just don't have the best body or you're out of shape or whatever, or you just have aged out, you're not going to get into the program. So that's when that person has to work on the ground and literally train someone to have their brain up there. Was, I, I saw a really, really interesting lecture at ASU and that really got me thinking because he was an uh, uh, astrogeologist. And he goes, you know how hard it is to teach someone to pick up a rock? You know, and I've been doing it my whole life. And they, so one of the things that, that, or the group of things that you have of functional movement, now I mean functional movement is when you can put a cup to your mouth. Um, when you have a stroke, you have a loss of functional movement. So, like I've mentioned, there's no rotation whatsoever in outer space. When you, when an astronaut needs to just even turn a screw, if his feet aren't locked down, then his body is going to go around the screwdriver. Um, so all of their their uh, functional movement is on tethered basis. Um, there again is no opposition to gravity. Um, one of the key things. That, that happens and that I really find interesting for what I do. Um, now my specialty are, are special needs kids. However, my oldest special needs kid's 94. So it's not that I stick with just the, the munchkins. But you lose all your, I can't stand in outer space. I can't crawl, I can't sit down, I can't lie down. So you really regress like my son did. So when, when they're talking about the astronauts, and I'll talk about that more in the next slide, but don't change it. You're not going to play well with others when, you, when you're going through these kind of movement issues. So with the loss of developmental milestones, um, you also have a loss of compressive response, meaning that um, your tactile abilities really disappear. Just holding that cup um, really becomes a problem in outer space. I mean, it looks fun. I wouldn't mind floating around for a little bit. But it, it really is a total, total difference on your neurological system. So um, the, one of the biggest complaints that astronauts have, again, is that feeling of isolation. Now, it's really blamed on that ISIS is just too small or they're, they're, they're in small captivity. But I really, again, feel that, again, you don't have a good night's sleep. Uh, sleep disorders is one of the biggest complaints. You actually just can't lie down and take that breath and just sink into the bed. Um, that's all gone. Um, so they have a lot of problems with uh, morale interaction with, with one another. But I really think, in a sense, they're, they're, it's uh, almost like when their system has a small TIA, uh, a small uh, minor stroke kind of thing, or, or going into an Alzheimer-type autism regression. Um, when you lose your developmental milestones, uh, your brain really uh, doesn't do well uh, going in reverse and having cognitive issues as well. If you have to... I'm not everyone have you have experience of stroke or something like that, but I'm sure you've been around somebody the fatigue that it takes um, of not being able to know how to open up a tube of toothpaste. When you have to think about your daily skills once again, um, it's not something that they can train for. And I think really, um, oh, and I'll get into a little bit later in the presentation, is again that they, they, 
don't get that opposition to gravity or that feel that, that compressive uh, attitude on the body. So Nassau and most uh, professionals go after what is concerned for is more biomechanical or a muscle-based theory, a muscle-based approach, meaning they believe in a load lift system. Now I get it that I can lift a weight and let's say in one month you can come back and see 20 to 30 percent body mass index ratio increase and I can go on and on and on. That's still not going to help me feed my face. Um, anyone in the Army can tell you, especially going through boot camp, just because someone is strong doesn't mean they can move. Interior strength, it's still about how you move. And the quickest form for anti-aging is really just moving better. You know, um, it comes into having lack of pain and all of those kind of things, I wish I could breathe better, but all of those are movement-based patterns that can be changed at any moment in our lives. We're never too old as far as I'm concerned, and, uh, and I'm not going out that way. So this is one of the most common ways that you see, which is a CVIS. Um, they do, this is what they consider for one of the big uh, proactive uh, for astronauts for endurance. They will check the astronaut's heart and uh, lung functions through this, and somehow they're supposed to be strapped to, I guess which is called a bicycle, um, but, and breathe at the same time they, they, and go in and try and to keep their, their lung function up. Because um, as you know with the pulmonary fail, um, which I'll get into later, I'm just going to go over the various points of equipment that they use for exercise. So the mirrors is one of the most common and so forth. Again, we're going into a load lift system, but if you can see, that person is so restricted. I don't know how the heck he lifts a weight to save his life. <laughs> um, you know, but this is what they do to, to show, um, again, to monitor the, the muscle strength that's going on in the system. She just ran the Boston Marathon uh, not too many years ago with, with them, um, with the Colbert, um, as far as they haven't changed really much of the equipment in, in just years. Um, um, and then this is another version that they, they have that they're, they're going on. Um, as far as I know, this is current. What might be changing a lot too, though, is the software, as the software changes. but. Um, but again, it is a load lift mode um, system. So one of the things that, that um, again, that, that I talked about, and I'm now going to explain so you can see it more on a, on a human form of what we go on down, is, is we manipulate gravity. We play with gravity. Gravity isn't as severe as people think. Um, as far as if I drop my keys down, the keys aren't stuck to the ground. I mean, we really can, I can move this chair hopefully for, for and, and move a couple of chairs. Yes, there's weight base, but we actually, everything that we do, we're manipulating gravity. It's really hard to explain to someone uh, that with gravity, it's in all directions. So it's this way, it's this way, it's this way. It's not like I'm, you know, it's easy to demonstrate on a book that gravity's coming from all direction. But as I walk through here, I'm walking in a sense again, like through gravity. So all the equipment that they're doing and even continuing doing is really, it's outdated, it's bulky. It's, it's, it's still not creating the results that they need. Even the whole twin study I think was based off of uh, the equipment I showed. Um, you look concerned. Is there, is there a piece of equipment I missed? Or, oh, okay. Um, you say the twin study you're talking about. Uh, um, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, was based off of all of this kind of um, biomechanics and so forth as far as um, their strength. And um, um, the only thing that I'm not covering here is the immunity studies that they did. What was really interesting, though, is, is uh, I've heard it before, but I really like what, what uh, astronaut Hatfield said, he learned how to speak with a weightless tongue. Like, can you imagine like that your tongue doesn't know gravity? And um, uh, I've heard it from many of the astronauts, they were shocked how even their lips and their tongue were like bricks. You know, just that gravity. Um, you know, she was just up for a year and, um, Peggy Whitson, sorry, um, 
if, if you saw her come out, I mean, you, they, they really, they have to carry you. If you haven't seen an astronaut land, not everybody, you know, um, maybe you're, I guess you're all astronomy club, we should all have seen. But they, they get put out here for show, but they, they can't move. They, they really are are something. I think just bearing a smile is, is a, a very difficult for, for the photo op. Um, and then they lose a coverage picture real quick when they have to transport, and you don't see them again until they're uh, out of rehab. And right now, minimum rehab for an astronaut, I think, is about 45 days for them to actually learn how to walk again. <laughs> So like I mentioned, one of the biggest things that, that I feel bad about um, is the smartest man doesn't always get the job. And I'm not saying the smartest to be condescending. All the astronauts are amazing. Um, but um, life really shouldn't be about necessarily all of our physical limitations. And um, when you're on a load lift system basis, you know, and having to be a certain type and a certain muscle structure and lung function structure and so forth, um, so I want to start showing you here again our just movements that we just sort of take for granted. Um, <clears throat> us getting up and down to jumping around and doing cartwheels, uh, again, a cartwheel going around is, is all through with gravity. Um, humans are a propulsion system, and I'm going to go into and actually show you the inside of muscles. But the, the formatting movement is 14.7 is pounds of gravitational force per square inch around your entire bodies. Uh, one of the things I think is curious, I think one of the reasons why uh, surgery hurts so much, it's not so much that they've cut into you, but I think part of you, those organs are being exposed to gravity and they've never felt it before, and that's where the pain comes from. Um, our epidermis is a lot like sleeping on a bed of nails. If you sleep on a bed of nails, it distributes the weight and that doesn't hurt. But if you sleep on one nail, I think the importance of our organ, of the epidermis, being, as I said, the most important organ, is really that it distributes gravity equally around our bodies, um, that we can have an even feel for it, whether we're getting up through our back or through our stomach or through our sides, that are, are ready for that. Um, if you do trivia, but if, if someone is burnt or something, you, you score all the way through your epidermis, um, you will you'll lose the limb or you'll pass. Um, so that's where the grafting has to come in to build back that skin system. And I really do believe it's for this kind of equation, which I think really uh, is overlooked in outer space. Not that they have blood force trauma, but I, I think it's going to be interesting to perform any kind of major surgeries that they're looking for. Um, in outer space based off of uh, keeping your parts inside. So all of babies, when they're born, it's like an iPad with no apps. My iPad will only be as smart or my phone as the apps I put in it. If I do not know how to use it, it will not do what I need it to be. Um, it's the same with, with infants. When they're born, again, they, they'll, and I'll go into how they're born, but they can only respond to stimuli based off of rotation. That's it. I get it. I could sit here right now and probably learn something new, but I've already mastered those skills. But for an infant, an infant cannot have deviations in those movements. So when human development really starts um, to happen, um, we really don't think at this stage being important, but this is, this is it. This is how we start relating to gravity. I can tell you, uh, again, as a movement specialist, um, if, 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 it's, excuse me, if an infant doesn't breathe well at birth, I can tell you without intervention they're going to have issues walking. Because if they can't deal with gravity and breathing, they're, dealing with gravity and walking is just going to be another step um, that goes on. What's really interesting about showing the womb is, first of all, the womb has amniotic fluid. So it's a different ratio of gravitational force because they are suspended in liquid. But the reason it's crucial that it's different is that we really have very low organ function in um, the fetus, meaning that we're not breathing, we're not digesting food, we're not excreting waste. Sometimes there's complications right at the end as far as that's concerned. So you really can't take the way the body is responding to a low, let's say, gravity force um, of the womb and compare that to um, going forward to 
uh, the same thing about being out of space. The data would be incorrect on that because, again, you don't have the pulmonary functions. And also what's very important too, there's no rotation in the womb. Um, you're not going to see rotation in the womb. Um, you'll see spasticity and uh, uh, the active passive phase start happening. Um, but also you should not see limbs cross. So this is not a good thing, but you'll see just the baby do this. You'll see sucking, that kind of thing. But it's not like they're going, oh, like, you know, getting ready for a selfie. <laughs> um, you know, they don't have those kind of moves, so, so when a baby kicks, in a sense, it's more of that uh, flexion and inflection kind of things where the muscles are, are happening um, and getting used to movements. Um, I have a, a book, not that it, it, it has to do with astronomy, it's called The Newborn Movement Assessment, and one of the things that I look at in a natural-based delivery, um, this is where rotation is introduced to the nervous system. So as a baby not only comes out of uh, the mother, but that rotation now, and that's where you get your first breath, and that's where it all starts to happen, um, where you, the nervous system now is start relating to gravity. So all of that I've been talking about, you can start seeing here. Just real basic, simple skills, but guess what? Again, none of these really can be performed in outer space. It's a very... Um, the way that, that the baby is learning how to digest his food uh, through a torque-based method, through, through nursing, let's say, just simply playing with a toy, transferring weight, um, rotating over this, crossing midline, however you want to look at it, <coughs> are very simple complexities. It's one thing you do not see even astronauts do is cross midline. They stay here. I'm not saying they can't, but it's not something that naturally will come into play. You'll see more where the, the chest stays centered. So the major de developmental milestones that cannot be accomplished, again, are lying down, a crawling, sitting, standing, walking, skipping, and running. So all of our major, major, major milestones really cannot be formed in outer space. And here, as you can see, again, where my thoughts are, so when you have a lack of decreased rotation, uh, that's when you're going to have developmental movement delays. So it doesn't matter Parkinson's, MS, um, stroke. All of these complications, again, as we get older, Alzheimer's, you'll see a severely decreased lack of rotation. One of the best things you can do for anti-aging, and I'll give you a little quickie at the end, is really to continue that rotation, um, even if it's just working the room meaning looking around when you're walking. First thing that I can see in Alzheimer's is, is uh, peripheral vision goes down to about here. They really, uh, it's, it's a shame, but that's where you'll start to see. So again, where this is crucial is a neural mapping is done on anyone that has issues, it starts to be coming down to succumbing to gravity. Um, you start worrying about everything from the waist down in that sense, and that's where your, your field of reference is. Um, one of the biggest problems that's happening now in the 21st century, it's, which all of you can agree with, we do very little, it's not that we're at the computer too much, we do very little <coughs> with anything over our shoulders. We don't prune our trees anymore, we don't hang laundry, uh, we don't uh, uh, hit carpets, hunting and spearing is long gone but we don't do really functional movements with our arms above our shoulders. And that's one of the things that's really going forward um, with human. Right. I mentioned before with the Alzheimer's without rotation is you really lose your peripheral recognition. So you'll see this with someone's going for the car. And I can't even see you. you know, that's what starts to happen, um, whether it's this child or, or an adult that's starting to decline with its relationship. So it's not necessarily based off of muscle, it's based off of how you use your system. We actually have other parts besides our muscles, and I don't think that a lot of uh, high-end people look at that. Um, and also with these movement patterns, it concludes our subconscious, and this is where it happens. You have three subconscious life forces, breathing, balance, and heart function. You should not wake up in the morning and worry about any of these functions. If you do, your subconscious functions are now, your, your brain, your conscious brain is on life support. So one of the things you have to do, especially when you've fallen ill in health or, or your issues with balance, is you have to cure 
or work with those levels, let's say, of balance and integrating it back so it's in your subconscious. I'm not saying burn the walker and that kind of thing, but you need to use these things in a way that it's not, I, I don't wake up and go, oh, okay, my heart's still beating. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when, when you are in outer space, the, the use of these tools start becoming an issue, especially when you come back, and that's where the failure can come into. So again, one of the complexities with all that I'm telling you, rotation is especially rotation in the pelvis, but it's your acceleration. The way I can run down the street um, and the way that I can use this. Um, that's where uh, the jumping and all of these kind of things, again, which are totally lost as we age, become adults. Not everyone goes, boo. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, too, with the astronauts. This whole just doing this you're getting very minimal effort for getting across um, the way. And it really teases the brain that, boy, I hardly have to do anything to move. And it really starts playing with their nervous system. So this is where um, one of my papers that I presented. Um, this is the inside of your muscles. I believe that they read the slides wrong in 1954. Right now, um, this is the myosin and I'm not going to quiz you on all this, but this is where I have my, my button toys. Um, the inside of your muscle function is actually uh, coil-based, spring-based. They're saying, uh, science is telling you, or it, the doctors learned that it's a sliding filament. I'm like, how do you feed your safe face with a slide? I'm like, this can't work. And when I start, I'm like, everything, this is where it all starts to pop out. I'm like, oh my gosh, your muscles rotate. So um, I'm so glad I had toys like this when I was a kid. This changed my life. This is a muscle contraction. This is your heart breathing. This is breathing. This is, it's funny, when you play with these things, I can even stand up straighter. But this is where I was like, oh my gosh, um, this is where all of uh, our function comes from. So when I go to reach out of the car or reach for my cup or just walk down the street, I'm losing my stride here. But this is how our muscles function. And the reason I call it perpetual motion, I know it's not true perpetual motion, because if I stop, obviously, so is the button. But with this perpetual motion, though, when I'm toying it off of another string when I'm walking, and these are your muscle functions going, this is what keeps you walking down the street. And what made me really curious is when you see in a bunch of like, you know when kids start to spin when they're like three and a half, four, spins, cartwheels, and you're sitting there like, aren't you tired? You're basically the minus and the active, and it's all in the books as, as all spinning, but I just wanted to show it as all animated. Um, but for some reason, even all these filaments were twisted. They, they showed it as, that somehow this was sliding. And uh, the next, because they're really, there's still some thoughts that were made of gears and levers. I mean, just because this is an elbow, again, I can't feed myself and Okay, so this is a rotary cuff, I get it, so I'm a windmill. But it's not until the elbow comes into play that I now have torque within my chest cavity. And I can start doing movements that, that couldn't be doing. Just because I have it, this is, just happens to be a joint, this is not the source necessarily of my movement. And again, yes, I can function like that, but somehow when I do pick up the weight, I will have to torque, rotate to get that weight. Um, so I'm just again showing the difference on that in the mix. And then again, oh, quick play. And again, here's my button toy, but this is a muscle contracting. You have this, the sarcomeres that are going in and out on, on various levels. And that's actually what's, what's pulling our muscles. And this is where we get our power from. And this kind of uh, mechanism really needs to have attention when we get into outer space. So seeing it again to showing them, um, because the, the, the paper that I introduced on gravity uh, was based on all living organisms need rotation uh, to oppose gravity. You can see it even just with how to get the seed out. And then also how the sun comes over east-west. I'm sorry, I'm not in the right direction, but the plant will follow the sun and again get its rotation from our hurricanes. We go on and on and on from Jupiter to what's going on. And this is where this will go into planetary based. Um, the reason, again, if you want to look at rotation now, and, and hopefully if, if more of you are into the planets than you are into astronauts, um, I've covered for this. If you look at our cores, now it was only discovered recently um, in this century, 
that, and I had said before I even knew it, I'm um, like, the cores have to rotate in opposite directions. So this is where we get our, what I call our binding force, and I really think this is where gravity comes from, is that each core um, rotates in opposite directions. It goes all the way out. We Now you start seeing rotations. If you're interested in atmospheric streams, jet streams, um, you'll start to see this continued rotation. The Earth rotates around the sun, yes, in, in, in orbit, but as you can see, the deviations around it, and that's where it's getting its internal spin. You can see it here on a horizontal level. And then um, what a lot of people don't realize um, is that the sun is actually traveling. So the Earth, this is about 100 years of your life right here of how many rotations we're actually going after, chasing after the sun. Um, I was really interested in the math of the hand dryer scope. That's what I was just trying to do. But it's the only equip piece of equipment that I know that has a ball on the ball. And as that turning goes in, that bind starts to happen. This bind, the reason it, it pertains to the astronauts, again, as I reach out, my bones go one way, my muscles go another way, my epidermis, and then the myofascia tissue. And that, to me, is what creates a bind in a human being. If I spin around, they believe it's inertia, but actually what it is is my system binds and I come in. If I'm drunk or if I'm tired or whatever, if I spin around, I fall away from myself, I fall down. The bind is not there. And what's really interesting, if I spin around with, with a baby that has a healthy nervous system, the baby also clings to me like a little koala. But if a baby has special needs, they fall away. They don't have that same, that bind, that attraction. Um, okay. And that's where you see two in our galaxies. Um, as, so the sun rotates, and we, yes, we rotate around the sun. But we rotate, I believe, in such a way, and that's where you're seeing all these gal uh, galaxy spheres um, and how we bind together as a solar system. It's that rotation within the rotation um, keeping us. Uh, and again, meaning if you have a bucket on a string and you're going around. Um, there's, there's no living organisms on the moon. Um, there's, a, there's no core or a, a very diminished lack of uh, rotation within the core itself. Um, there's a diminished or lack of uh, object rotation as well. So again, we've never seen the far side of the moon. There's no atmosphere, there's no life force. Um, and the same thing true is the star, well, I think they're looking right now at 19 galaxies to see if they're going to form. Um, and this is where they really need to pay attention because if the stars don't have the proper rotation inside and out, um, and that's where you get the, the when the, the, the stars die out. But they can't attract that galaxy, and they really should. Uh, this is where I'd love the math. Um, to, I think it would really help the way that they're looking at different galaxies to see if they're going to form planets. Um, the same thing with an inanimate object. I, I look as, as the moon kind of thing. Um, again, they're unable to oppose gravity. gravity. They don't have the atmosphere. Um, again, they don't do the rotation, but what's interesting is they, they're unable to create a perpetual motion. Uh, Tyson does, a, uh, per, uh, Dr. Tyson does a, an interesting thing about the weather in uh, Jupiter. Uh, I'm going to butcher it because, again, this is not my, my forte, but it's like, why is that red dot there? And he's like, this thing's spinning, like, how fast? Like, of course this storm's going to go forever. I mean, it's like, it would be a hurricane just, you know, covering all the whole Earth. And that's just the way it's doing. But that perpetual motion that can be created in the rotation, and the one thing I cannot find out, which uh, it's got to be, Titan's got to rotate. Like, you know, that, that's, that can't be a moon um, as far as it, it being just a, and that's where you get in the, the ice caps and everything. But I, I can only find that it rotates around Saturn, but that, that rotation, I try to ask them at ASU, and everyone's like, oh, good question. I'm like, well, there's the answer. Yeah. So, and, and eventually you will have collisions in the, with the succumbing to gravity and stuff like asteroids and those kind of things that they don't have that proper um, uh, individuality. Um, I bring this up um, to talk about not only the moon with terminal force, but with inertia, but, but also there are some um, conversations about spinning um, ISIS. And uh, I, I, right now, I'll tell you right now, it's not going to work. First of all, it's going to cost us a fortune. But when you look at someone that, that's, let's say, surfs, skis, skateboards, you have a different neural mapping that goes on. Um, 
So going back again, when you have the low gravity static exercises, I get it that a lot of these exercises do work down here. Um, but based off of what I was saying, they need to create more things, things that I'm designing. I'm not, you know, I haven't, I haven't, you know, this wasn't about trying to show what I've been working on, but when, I, when we all go to stand up or go to sit down, it's against gravity. So to be able to move and to move through space again with that force, I really believe that if these conversations are looked at more seriously um, and developed, that if you could tease the brain that it's actually opposing gravity, let's say for two hours a day, up in the space station, versus not exposed to any kind of opposition to gravity for six months a year, if not longer. If we're going to get to Mars, we really have to start looking back at how the human body moves through space, hours first, versus it being a muscle-based system. Again, if someone has a stroke and so forth, the muscle contractions going on in that person's back through the hand, that's what, what the contractions are, is based off of that. They can't move, they can't do their jobs. We have to look at those kind of things of, of really looking at how the body works differently versus the diagnosis. I get it that someone might have had a stroke and needs to see a cardiologist. But that's the difference between how they present movement. And that's especially different for how the astronauts are going to be looked at. I mean, look at that. His feet are tethered. His pel pelvic restriction. And, and then, you know, I get it that that's what they have to feel they have to do for an isolated muscle-based response because that's what they're used to measuring. That's not going to help him live. So that's where you have the issues with the bone density. In the womb, the baby is meant to expand in all directions. That's what our brain knows. But guess what? This is the only time our body is put in expansion-based mode, other than in the womb. Everything down here has been on a compressive-based mode. Not severe, but enough. And we've learned to tolerate that. So even going to Mars with a different rotation, not just a different gravitational force, you're going to have issues with the way that the body is, is, is portraying. So to be working on um, the, what they expect or the pulmonary functions, well, if, if I don't have a little bit of compression, well, how do I breathe? I actually am pushing my chest away from my body. It's not that just my lungs are filling up. There's a lot of nervous systems that are going on in place in our body that need to need movement. So when you're in outer space and you have that, you know, like, I'm just, I'm breathing, you know, but versus I'm breathing. Um, to bring them back, they really need to have um, almost like a precursor even, if they don't do it full time, to come back to gravity and to deal with it. But the bone loss again comes from, because again, the body starts going away. And the reason I really believe all this is right is why does a vertebrae grow in outer space? The brain has to be going back into a womb like, and that's when it's meant to expand in all directions. Bone shouldn't start growing in the middle of our life. It's minor. You know what I mean? But, but uh, the, the brain, the nervous system, is really looking for um, that opposition. And when it doesn't have it, it goes back into growth mode. Um, and so, but again, can you imagine not having that sensation going underwater? Like you're just, it, you know, it's, it's rough on the system. So as you can see, many of us, what I like, um, and they've proven with the studies with the Parkinson's and stuff, um, I believe well, the reason I think pole walking is brilliant um, versus uh, having a cane or adaptive equipment or, or a walker is because it extends mm. your rotation and, and counterbalance. So um, it really lessens the severity of Parkinson's. Uh, they just look at it as could you increase your walking, but I think a lot of it is again, you're bringing back that rotation, and with that rotation, you're working the room, your peripheral vision uh, starts to increase. Um, and also what I like about the bicycle is because of the centrifugal force of the two wheels and that makes the force of the body because of the pumping of the bicycles against the centrifugal force, again, brings that sort of what I was just doing with the button toy um, back into our systems. But they are really great for anti-aging. And by the way, anti-aging too, to take the gravity off the organs, I really like swimming for that reason. Swimming? Anything in the water, really, because your organs just need a break and it just really takes that, that gravity. Uh, it's not that there's no gravity in water, but it still takes, uh, the pressure off for a little bit. What's interesting about you water, can't, in the water, you can't fall. So it really uh, adds to your balance uh, issues if you have them. Getting in and out of the water, now that can be another thing, but at least your vestibular system is much more 
even if you just go in there just really to take a load off. It doesn't have to be with, with high-end aerobics, but I, I really like uh, water to it that. Again, what I'm talking about is I really think with all of this, um, a lot of the mathematical formulas have to be changed the way we, we look at space um, and the rotation. Um, it's not just the gravitational force, but again, with the gravitational force with rotation. Same thing too, like I said, these are brilliant people up there. They shouldn't be coming back the way they are. John Glenn is, is I think, the exceptions, you know what I mean? Um, but you have a lot of people, John Glenn was only up for a couple of rotations, and you know, he wasn't up to six months to a year where you're seeing these chronic things, and, and people are really risking their, their, their lives, their long-term care, you know, you know um, but for the sake of us. And I'd like to, you know, but I knew by proving this, it would prove my theories down here with, the, with um, big and little kids. And um, really, we have to create an artificial opposition to gravity, not artificial gravity. You know, and that's what needs to be done um, for long-term space. Yeah. Oh, they're not going to get to, oh, here, our next slide. Um, I, I, I can guarantee you, and I'm not saying this to whatever, um, to make us life plant multiplanetary, they, they need to use this information. They can't, there, there's, I don't see how, with the way that they're doing this, because of what I see with the deterioration, let's say if someone, let's say, had a severe stroke, being very similar to the way they come back, um, as far as the way the body is in shock, to get someone up in a can for three years, what they're gonna need to go to Mars and back, even just to collect, I think, a rock, um, they're going to need to have to start using this information, which it really is an artificial opposition to gravity versus creating an artificial gravity. But how about their, their spacesuits look like they would really resist rotation? Right. Yeah, no, no, I know. Um, even everything that you do in space, you just, if you actually go now and go watch a couple of films, I, I, I didn't want to mean really to go away from uh, all these guys, Kelly, to stay up there for a year for the sake of science. Um, you know, they're not mice, they're, they're, they're amazing people, um, uh, to really look at the way that that's done. But again, this whole thing about rotation has is, is really been my baby. Even just to look at the muscle cell function, there's, there's nothing about it. It's all, it's all like I said, they, they're looking at the wrong data in a sense and, and sending someone. You can't put someone that's never been on a bicycle on a bicycle and then increase them to 30 pounds of pressure, let's say. You need to evaluate how they move first before and then start. So there has to look to see where they're initiating movement and then where we can stimulate it and then where we can enhance it. And I do mine all with, with this rotation. I, that's where my, my baby is. Um, there's many different ways, but I really have found a lot of people look for diagnosis and then, oh, for stroke, this is what we do. Well, I'm Charlie that had a stroke, and you know, and I this is what I'm used to, and and so um, that's it. That's me. Um, mm -hmm. it